Hi, I'm Linda Eads and I'm a member of the ReCM investment team. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Net Group Investments Managed Fund. So we've been managing this fund since 2006 and we've done so throughout using the value investment philosophy. And what that seeks to do is to grow capital in real terms and to protect against permanent losses of capital. Now the second point is very important for two reasons. The first is that over the last year in particular the fund has had negative returns. So that calls into question whether we're actually avoiding losses of capital. And the second is that the market environment is priced very expensively today. So I think the risk that most investors have at the top of their minds is the loss of their capital from this point onwards. So how does a fund like the Net Group Managed Fund, which doesn't seem to be doing a very good job of protecting capital, provide investors with protection against the ultimate risk out there for investors, which is the risk of permanent capital loss? Well, first, let me speak to the negative numbers that you've seen in the fund over the last year. So what's happened in the global environment and the local environment is that over the last three years, you've had the cheap stocks, so the things that were starting to look attractive, become even cheaper. So they might have been trading at a 30% discount to what they were worth three years ago. Today, they're trading at 60 to 70% discount to what they're worth, which of course means they're more compelling today, but it's not been a comfortable journey for investors from point A to point B. And you have another part of the market which has continued to get more and more expensive. So whilst you might have made the case that they represented the risk of permanent capital loss three years ago, they've continued on that upward trajectory. And now as a result, are looking even more precarious at today's valuations. So let's take a look at the South African market firstly at the overall level. What this graph shows is the South African price to book value ratio and you can see that the solid line in the middle of the graph is the average and the yellow line which represents where the market is today is significantly above that. And that doesn't bode well for investors in terms of the investment outcome from this point onwards. So the all share index is trading at about 2.6 times the average book value of all the stocks in it versus the ReCM portfolio which has stocks in it which are trading just slightly above their book value. So the overall level is 1.3 times. Now I can tell you that some of those stocks are even below book value. If you want to avoid the risk of permanent capital loss, you have to steer away from the most expensive parts of the market because permanent capital loss comes about when stocks which are priced too attractively, too highly, experience a capitulation which brings them into more realistic territory. Often it's overdone, but it brings them back to levels which are more in line with their long-term fundamentals. If you want to steer away from those stocks, unfortunately it means that you have to sell down or sell out of the stocks that have performed very well over the last few years. And that's a difficult thing for investors to do. But as value investors, our process and the discipline of the process forces us to consistently sell down the stocks which have done well in the portfolio and invest in the stocks which are undervalued, which represent the best outcome from this point onwards. So if we look at what opportunity set represents the best outcome from this point onwards, I'm sure you could conclude quite easily that we believe that's in the resources sector in terms of looking at what industries one would be invested in in this market environment. But if you remind yourself of how resources were priced at the last peak, it gives you some clues as to why we think that those are the investment opportunities of today versus some of the best loved companies in the industrial sector, which are unfortunately just trading at too high a price to represent a good investment return from this point. So in 2008, the all shared more than half of the index in resources. At the time, most investors would have had that in their portfolio. They would have had at least half of their portfolio in resources. Today, we have about 40% of the equity component in resources. And many investors are saying, well, that's very risky because of course they haven't performed very well. But we would argue it is far more risky to invest in the bigger portions of the index at the top of the market. Why? Because that is probably what is causing the problem. Those are the stocks that are the most expensive. And you look in 2008, those were resources stocks, and that's obviously very strong in people's minds, but they were trading at the time at more than four times book value. Today, resources are trading close to book value, and it is in fact the industrials which have performed so well from the bottom of the market, which represent the biggest risk of permanent capital loss. They today are trading at similar levels 
to what resources were trading at in 2008, at more than four times their book value. And of course, you can understand then why we don't hold many of these in our portfolio. Now, the interesting thing is that if you cast yourself back to the last market environment where mining was cheap relative to an overall environment that was expensive, you're looking at 99, 2000, just before the bursting of the dot-com bubble. I'm sure you would probably find it quite interesting to know that in that market environment, from peak to trough, the market fell by 49%. Whereas mining stocks, in actual fact, were up 21%. Why? Because they were priced so cheaply before the market fell. So if the market is priced expensively and there is a huge sell-off, remember that people have to sell what they own. So the most widely held stocks, which traditionally are the ones that are the most expensive at the peak of the market, because everyone's, of course, bought into that momentum, are the ones that fall the hardest. And Today, mining stocks are priced at similar, and in some cases even lower, than they were in that market environment when they were the last time that it was the right time to own mining stocks. So the portfolio doesn't just sit with resources exposure. I've spoken about that because that is, of course, a part of the reason why the fund has underperformed. At the same time, we've had many successes in the fund over the last three years. Stocks on the local side like Sun International, Grand Parade, uh, Capitec, Lewis, um, HCI, uh, Iliad have all been strong gains in the fund. And importantly, we've sold down those positions and we banked those gains. The portfolio does sit with quite a significant element in resources, which we do believe is the most compelling opportunity set today. But it also sits with many other opportunities which sit outside of that space and all of our new investment opportunities all of our new investment ideas are focused on stocks which are not correlated to the commodity cycle so just to summarize the net group investments managed fund is a portfolio of assets which are priced incredibly attractively in the context of a market which is very expensive and risks are high and those risks are that of permanent capital loss the portfolio is taking advantage of some of the most compelling ideas that exist in the marketplace. And this is the kind of market environment which makes value investing so successful over time. If you are in value investing and you can take advantage of the volatility, the mispricing, the inefficiency in the market as a whole, then you will have the kind of track record which triumphs other investment styles such that you get out of value investing because now is the time to exploit those inefficiencies. The fund is sitting at a discount to fair value of 35%. What that means is that there is potential upside of 53% in the fund today. In the context of a market which perhaps has some serious risk of downside, we find that very, very compelling. Thank you for your time today.